Hi everybody as we all have grown up each of our generation has seen the rise of a legendary artist that inspired an entire generation Before the 90s we saw legends like Michael Jackson Britney Spears and of course the legendary Beatles and today we are seeing the rise of another generation of legendary artists like Coldplay Beyonce and Rihanna But you know what guys Taylor Swift is one such artist who has done something so legendary that she single-handedly beat the records of Beyoncé and Coldplay combined. An 11-time Grammy-winning musician and one of the biggest stars in the world, the one, the only Taylor Swift everybody. In the summer tour of 2023, while Coldplay made 85 million dollars, Beyoncé made 145 million dollars. Both of them combined made 230 million dollars. but taylor swift single handedly made an insane 305 million dollars pop superstar taylor swift's new concert film may have been number 1 at the box office last week see the concert that is turbocharging the economy and capturing the pop culture zeitgeist this summer 53% of the adults in the united states consider themselves to be taylor swift fans meanwhile the, the tour itself is an economic juggernaut And now this era tour alone is set to earn 1 billion dollars in ticket sales and 5.7 billion dollars in consumer spending in the US economy. You know how much money that is? This tour alone will generate more revenue than the GDP of 35 freaking countries. Never before have we ever seen an artist put multiple stadium shows on sale in the same city and blow them all out. on the on sale. So ever since Taylor Swift started touring, my Gen Z friends have been going crazy about Taylor. And because of this intense pressure, I started looking into Taylor Swift. And you know what guys? I think Taylor Swift is a marketing genius and a brilliant businesswoman who knows how to use storytelling to make a billion dollars. Because if a single person can catalyze a billion dollar economy, that is something absolutely extraordinary. So in this episode today, let's dig deep and try to understand without a powerful connection, how did an ordinary girl like Taylor Swift become a legend in the American music industry? What are the personal branding strategies that she deployed to be called the greatest artist of this generation? And most importantly, what are the marketing lessons that we need to learn from this legend called Taylor Swift? But before we move on I want to quickly tell you about our sponsors of today's episode and that is Kiwi. People Kiwi is a game changer in modern finance which provides you with a virtual rupee UPI enabled credit card with zero joining fees and zero annual fees and you get the convenience of a credit card on your phone with fantastic perks. With Kiwi you can earn 1% cashback in the form of Kiwis for every scan and pay transaction that you make and you can easily convert them into real cash in your account. All you have to do is provide your details and complete a hassle-free KYC process. You will also receive calls from the Kiwi app just in case you're having trouble with the process. And that's it. You will receive a forever free virtual card with no joining fees and no annual fees. The best part is that you can use it to make payments anywhere from street vendors to shopping malls. So Kiwi truly empowers you with credit on UPI. So if you find this useful, click the link in the description, scan with Kiwi and pay with credit. The story of Taylor Swift started when she was just 14 years old. During this time, just like today, Mumbai is the go-to place for Bollywood career. In the US, a place called Nashville was the go-to place for musicians. So at the age of 14, Taylor convinced her parents and moved to Nashville and her gamble paid off. In Nashville, a label company's founder named Scott Borchetta saw her performing and they signed a 13 years contract with her. And this is where Taylor Swift's professional journey began. And this teaches us the first lesson of business which is talent and hard work in the wrong place cannot get you anywhere and as much as it is important to work hard on your craft it is equally important for you to be present at the right place to be able to grab the opportunities that can change your fortune and this is something that Taylor Swift and her parents both of them realized when she was just 14 years old and that is a big big deal because if you were to convince my parents or your parents to move to a different city just so that you could pursue your career in music at the age of 14 you know what the response would be right but you know a lot of singers often achieve childhood stardom but hardly a few of them end up being relevant for two freaking decades so the question is what is so special about taylor swift that she stayed relevant and at the top of the charts for 17 long years 
Well, the answer to this question lies in something called parallel evolution. And this is something that I found common even with Eminem. To put that straight, if you were to analyze the most significant points in a girl's life, this is what it would look like. During school time, the most happening thing in an American girl's life is high school romance and new teenage life that they try to cope up with. On one side, there is this dream of doing something big, but on the other side, there is the challenge of going to college. And in this process, there is high school romance that brings in spice to life. So you know what? Taylor Swift's first round of albums were based exactly on these three themes, which are high school romance, teenage dreams, and the challenges of being a teenager. And here's where she released her albums Taylor Swift and Fearless, which resonated with her audience from the first day itself. And what are the most significant phases of college life? We deal with our first set of heartbreaks. We see drastic change in our relationships from school to college. And most importantly, we feel the bitter sweet taste of growing up. And we all have felt this, right? When we leave college, we feel empowered because we can make money. But we feel bad and we feel empty because we will no longer be seeing our friends. And here again, Taylor Swift released her albums Speak Now and Red, which dealt with heartbreaks, the changing relationships and the bittersweet taste of growing up. So you see, the same teenage audience was growing up with Taylor Swift songs as they dealt with the changing dynamics of life. Similarly, Blank Space and Bad Blood address the challenges of perception, identity and the challenges of relationships, which is again something that we face in the mid-twenties. And just like this, as the audience grew up, Taylor Swift's songs kept on resonating with her audience with the themes of adult life, vulnerability and strength. This is how Taylor Swift's songs and the audience, both of them evolved together parallelly. This is one of the most important reasons why, as Taylor Swift became wildly popular, in business terms, as she kept on adding more consumers, she also retained her old consumers because they were growing up with the songs of Taylor Swift, which was a reflection of their own life. So the fandom of Taylor Swift reached extraordinary levels because over time, she started to have fans and followers who were listening to her songs since a decade. This is the power of relatability. Now the question is, relatability and storytelling is common for many great singers, right? Then the question is, what makes Taylor Swift so special and why is she being called the greatest artist of this generation? Well, you know what guys, Taylor Swift is a legend not just because of her songs, not just because of her lyrics, but also because she has been an iconic aspiration for 21st century women all across the world. And eventually, she became a rebel against some of the biggest names in the industry, including Apple. Yes, Taylor Swift waged a battle against Apple itself. And every time she went head to head against these big guns, she became an icon for 21st century women. And the story of this rebel started in 2009 with something called the Kanye West episode. 21 time Grammy award winning performer. One of the most talented men in the world. He's a multi award winning recording artist. Please welcome the one and only Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best selling musical artists in the world. This is a story that dates back to 2009 MTV Video Awards. This is when Taylor Swift was just 19 years old and the industry was dominated by big names like Beyonce, Kanye West and Eminem. But even then, Taylor Swift was awarded the best female video at the MTV Music Awards. Now you can imagine, a 19 year old kid was climbing the stage which had the biggest names of the world in the audience. This was a dream moment for Taylor. But you know what guys, in the middle of her acceptance speech, Kanye West climbs up the stage and says this. I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. I, I was standing on stage and I was really excited because I had just won the award and then I was really excited because Kanye West was on the stage. And then I, um, then I wasn't so excited anymore. This is how Kanye West ruined the dream moment of a 19 year old Taylor Swift. And he humiliated her in front of the most prestigious audience in the industry. But even then Taylor Swift did not respond harshly and she just kept quiet. But again, in 2016, Kanye West wrote a song and mentioned Taylor Swift with the following lines. I feel like me and Taylor might still have s why I made that famous. God damn. I made that famous. 
Now do you realize what this story signifies? It's not just the story of Taylor Swift, but the story of every extraordinary woman who achieves something incredible in our society. Just like Taylor, millions of extraordinary women in our society are downplayed in spite of they having great achievements. Their voices are silenced just because they said the right thing and their moments are stolen for absolutely no fault of theirs. So this wasn't just about Taylor Swift, but a representation of how our society treats the extraordinary women who rise by themselves. This is the reason why women from all around the world took this very very personally. So you know what Taylor Swift did? She channelized all her frustration and pain into releasing her album called Reputation in 2017, which was literally a message to the world about media's portrayal, vitriol and the duality of fame. So this time for Taylor fans, it wasn't just a song, it was a reflection of their own story in the society. So not so surprisingly, Reputation went on to become so successful that its pre-orders reached more than 400,000 units. After its release, the album sold more than 700,000 copies in its first day, making it the largest sales week of 2017. And lastly, Reputation became the fastest album to reach number one on iTunes in just six minutes. Not six days, not six hours, but six freaking minutes. This is how Taylor Swift became an icon in the music industry of America. But guess what? The story doesn't end here. The second monumental moment that turned Taylor Swift into a legend was something called the Scooter Braun controversy. And this is where the dark side of the music industry comes in. You probably don't know this, but most of your favorite artists do not own their work. Um, the music industry is, uh, eh, you know. Now you remember I told you when Taylor Swift was just 13 years old, the founder of a music label company signed her for a 13 years contract. This company was called the Big Machine Label Group. This company was purchased by another company called Ithaca Holdings, which was owned by a man named Scooter Braun. Now the way this works is that when the artist is signed with the label, the official recording of the song is done and that recording is known as the master recording. And using this version, the other copies are made. This master copy is owned by the label company and not the artist. And the way this deal works is that when the artist signs a contract with a record label, the label company finances the entire production of the album, including studio time, set design, the side artist and everything else. And in exchange for this financial investment, record labels retain the ownership of the master recordings. So after the recording is done, the label company will earn revenue from streaming platforms, physical sales, radio plays and licensing deals like movies, TV shows and commercials. And from this huge chunk of revenue, the artist is paid royalty on a periodic basis. So this looks like a fantastic deal, right? The artist gets to focus on the craft and the label company gets the money and does all the hard work for the artist. Well, it is a sweet deal until it turns ugly. And you will be shocked to know that many, many brilliant artists go broke because of label companies. In this case, what happened is that when the big machine label got sold, they sold all the albums, including Taylor Swift's six albums from 2008 to 2017, which also included Reputation. And even though Taylor wanted to pay for the master copies herself, nobody cared and the sale was complete. So it's like somebody is selling your own work to somebody else and you neither have a say in it nor do you get the money. Now this is a very common thing and artists usually protest for some time and eventually they shut up. But you know what Taylor Swift did? She decided to re-record all six albums and relaunch them against her own original recordings. So I've been re-recording uh, my first six albums because there was a thing that happened where I, I had wanted to own my work mm -hmm. of my first six albums and I, when I changed record labels. My first six albums were actually sold away from me. You know what this means? There'll be two Taylor Swift recordings in the market. The album that's original but isn't owned by Taylor Swift and the other album which is newly recorded but is owned by Taylor Swift. This is how Taylor Swift waged a war against one of the biggest label companies in the world and started competing with her own songs. And the result? Well, when Fearless came out in 2021, Fearless earned three times more revenue than the original version. And when her second re-recorded album Red was released, while the original sold 390,000 units, the recorded version sold 3.32 million album units. And now there are three more albums to be released where Taylor Swift will go on to reclaim her artwork from the big bad label companies. This is how Taylor Swift single-handedly stood up and won against the bullies of the industry. And you know what happened after that? There was a revolution in the music industry where many artists started raising their voices and the label companies became more aware and empathetic towards the artists. 
and this includes even giant companies like Apple and Spotify. In fact, in 2015, when Apple launched Apple Music, they launched a three month free trial and they said that they won't pay the artists because they aren't charging the customers. So Taylor Swift stood against Apple and said, if they don't pay the artists, she won't publish her 1989 album. And you know what? Within just one day, Apple reversed the decision and started paying all the artists across the world. So a trillion dollar company just bent down to Taylor Swift and decided to pay billions of dollars out of its own pocket to the artist. This is how Taylor Swift transcended from just a star singer to a rebel in the American music industry. Today, she writes, records and publishes her own songs and her net worth is close to $740 million, which is $270 million more than what big machine label group was valued at in 2019. So this is the story of how Taylor Swift created a loyal fan base using her parallel evolution of songs, used the bullying of the giants to become the voice of the 21st century woman, stood against the label companies and became the voice of the artists and most importantly, redefined the identity of an artist in the big bad music industry of America. And this brings us to the last part of the episode and that are the lessons that we need to learn from the rise of Taylor Swift. Lesson number one, while good artists crack the charts once, great artists often build a system to ace the charts for a decade. So if you're a super hit creator, artist or an actor, the one question that you got to ask yourself is what are you doing today to evolve as an artist to tap into new markets and stay relevant for a decade? Lesson number two, Whenever you are the underdog who gets bullied by the big guns, you can either crumble to the pressure or use it as an opportunity to rise higher. Because always remember, the story of an underdog winner always sells well. So if this is happening to you, you must know that it's an opportunity in disguise for you to shoot to fame in your industry. And lastly, in this big bad world, the people who stand up to a cause will always stand out in the crowd. In this case, while America has a lot of great artists, Taylor Swift stood out as a rebel who stood for the cause of the artist and as a rebel who stood for the identity of 21st century woman. And this is what transcended her from an artist to an icon and perhaps the greatest artist of our generation. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>